Welcome to Networking Star. This is the podcast where we explore the journeys, the struggles, and the strategies of successful entrepreneurs. I'm Jeffrey Boyle, your host, and together we're going to dive into the world of connections, innovation, and growth in business. Today I'm joined by Simon Chan. Simon is an author, a speaker, and a consistency coach within network marketing. He's had a lot of success as a bestseller on Amazon, and he's helped thousands of people across the world understand how to build business by building consistency. Simon, thanks for being a part of Networking Star. Me, Jeff, it's an honor. So let me ask you this, and I, I think I know the question because I've, I've met you before, but just for the people who haven't met you, why did you choose this particular industry, direct sales or network marketing? Well, it goes back to 20, 20 years ago. I can't believe it's been that long. Uh, you know, I had a great job. I loved it. It was a very low, low paying job, but uh, I loved the job. And I thought that's my whole life was slowly climb that corporate ladder and go up, you know, and 30, 40 years later, retire kind of like my mentors at that job in the, in the corporate world was that's what they did work at the company or maybe switch one or two times. And then I read a book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, that totally changed my life. It's been the most influential books in my life. Introduced the concept of residual income or passive income, like money. You get money even if you're not working. I was like, that is incredible. You know, I went to a prestigious university, never learned anything like that. Uh, I was always born, you know, I'm a shy, quiet Asian kid from Brooklyn, New York, just taught to just study hard, study hard to get a good job. And I was like, wow, this is what the rich do. Huh? That's why they're not working. And so I was like, I wanted passive income. What do I do? You got to start a business or do real estate. I just didn't have money. And I discovered the thing called direct selling. Um, I never, you know, the first time I heard the word network marketing, I actually thought it was marketing computer networks. I never, no one ever approached me about it. And I said, like, I want to do this. So I researched. Uh, I was very, very skeptical because it sounded too good to be true just to earn a, you know, invest a couple hundred or a thousand dollars and make six figures for the rest of your life. Super skeptical. But I read Network Marketing for Dummies, did a lot of research, found out it was legit. And uh, so actually no one, Jeff, I'm probably unlike 99.9% .9 of the people in direct selling, no one ever recruited me. I actually wanted to do it. I found a company, just Googled a company name uh, and put that company name in Los Angeles and Google and uh, some random website came up and I said, Hey, I want to join. How do I sign up? And that's how I got started. Well, I know your history and I know that you went immediately, immediately from starting and you became a top income earner pretty quickly. And now you do coaching and you've got podcasts of your own and you've got a lot of different clients and your speaker. The, the question I have is since you started it, which has been a few years ago compared to now, the industry has changed and evolved dramatically so what is the main thing that you're trying to do to keep up with technology as you coach people to, to, to keep up with all the different online sites that are competing with network marketing? Well, first of all, I was not a, in, well, relatively, I was an instant success. I want to clarify, but um, so if you look at overall your life, yes, I was an instant success, right? But I was struggled for months and months. I invested a couple of thousand dollars. I made no money because I lacked consistency. And it wasn't until... Uh, I had a mentor, which is a mutual friend of ours, Steve Schwartz, that really pushed me and held me accountable. And really, he was like the he was like he was like the gym trainer that you really didn't like because it pushed you hard, makes you want to like puke when you when you work out. But you get great results, and that's basically he did. He pushed me mentally hard, business. He pushed me really hard, and I never had anyone push me hard. Uh, I, I mean, at the gym workouts, but never in business or outside in my career. And once I learned the mindset and the habits to stay consistent, that's when I started getting results. Okay, but definitely not an instant success. Uh, in fact, my first two, three, three years, I didn't make much money in the profession. And then all of a sudden, it's like the exponential curve. You hit it, then your, your income picks off. Um, but getting back to your question, how, the industry has definitely changed a lot. Um, there's definitely more free resources today than ever. And I think in direct selling itself, Right now is the easiest time in the history since of direct selling to recruit someone because everyone in the world knows someone that's been successful or knows the person directly or indirectly or through one or two degrees away of someone who's made a lot of money in direct selling, right? Because that thanks to social media. You see it online. You see these people who became very successful working from home. Also, um, back 20 years ago, say you're going to work from home. That was weird. 
now like it's part of the lifestyle, especially with that the pandemic to you know do your own thing. Kids who graduate from university, they don't necessarily not everyone wants a job. They want to you know be an influencer, be a YouTube, like do your own thing because we're in the gig economy now, right? Be a freelancer. So it's the easiest time to recruit people because people are open. But at the same time, it's the hardest to keep people because of the shiny object syndrome. Like back then, when I first started, I researched, I joined my company. All I knew was my company. All the trainings I knew was, was the CD that my company gave out or my team did. I didn't know any other company. I didn't know names of the companies. With their, I didn't know anything. I was just like, I was in the tunnel. That's all I knew. But nowadays, thanks to social media, you can easily research, and there's tons of other resources out there, learn about different companies, see other people successful. And the natural tendency is when you're not successful, guess what? Oh, it's the company's fault. You don't see it's your fault. It's the company's fault. And you start looking sideways, and you get suckered into that shiny object syndrome, and you jump on to another company. And then after a couple of months, you join another thing, another thing, another thing. So one of the things that you talk about is consistency then. And uh, you know, two to three years to, to go from – not very successful to be able to have, to have your independence is in real world terms very fast. And I think well, that's one of the problems with the network marketing. And uh, for the years that I did it before is that you would have people that think that they could come in and instantly have success. What's the biggest difference between the top income earners and the people that jump from company to company? Well, I think it's uh, delayed gratification, right? And that's like a success in anything. Um, you know, before I had my first son, I did a lot of reading, personal development about raising kids. And they said the number one indicator for whether you're going to have successful children, whether it's in music, in school, in sports, or in business, is delayed gratification. Right? If you yeah. want something quick, you're never going to be successful. But if you're willing to grind and be patient and think long term, you're going to be successful. And the, the, it's almost like the degree of success you have in life is by the degree of how long-term thinking you have, right? And there's an extreme example. Uh, someone once told me, like, if someone was like a drug addict, they're thinking, they're thinking very short-term. Or they're thinking of when I'm going to get my next hit, right? Someone that is an addict is a very short, short time frame. Or someone that is, uh, like, a lot of middle class, they're just thinking about the weekend. Oh, I'm going to get to the weekend. I'm going to wait five days and get to the weekend. I can't wait for the weekend, right? Or some people, like, paycheck to paycheck. I can't wait for, like, every two weeks my paycheck to come, then I could buy this. But successful people think long term in years. They don't think in terms of days, hours, or by weeks or months. They think in years. So, if you have a I think something that helped me was before I got started, I read the network marketing for dummies. Because remember, I was very skeptical. So, I read that book and it said that if you stay with the same company and build consistently for five years, you can make a full time income. So, that was the perspective I came. I was going to give it five years. If it didn't work for five years, then I'm quitting. But if it, uh, if I quit before five years, then I'm cheating myself because all the data is out there. You give it five years time with the same company, building it every single day, you're guaranteed success. And then most people, what they, they do is they're just looking for the quick instant gratification. I think in nowadays, well, in five, uh, year, five with, years in the real world is is nothing for a job. And so if you're uh, talking nothing, five nothing. years for, uh, for the regular yeah. person, I think that it's a... Uh, it's, it's something that's hard for them to fathom as an entrepreneur. And I think that's one of the things with the network marketing is you get a lot of novice entrepreneurs. So they don't understand the grind. They don't understand how they get through that. So how do you get that person to have a different perspective as an upline, as a new, a new mentor? How do you get that new person to go from that instant success or get rich mentality into having a long-term per perspective? Well, you were right. Five years is a very short time in terms of your lifespan. Right. But when you're especially when you're younger, five years seems to like go a lot. And that goes for your personal development. Right. Like my mentor said, where are you going to be five years from now is determined by your personal development, the people you meet and the places you travel. Right. Your events. So uh, I went to my first event and I all the people I look up to. They're thinking 10, 20 years. They're thinking vision. Like most people think short term. They don't have a sh they have a short term vision. Their vision is this year or this month. Or like I said, this week. Can't wait for the weekend. Their vision is like weekend to weekend. Right, an addict is for hour by hour. So, going to events, and meeting different people, and see, or like you go to the, like you asked me how I stay in touch with the social media. I connect. I'm in mastermind groups. I invest myself. I I listen to different podcasts. I see these people are thinking 10, 20 years. These people start influencing you, right? We start changing. 
And in order for your income, Jim, my late mentor, Jim Rohn says, in order for your income to change, you must change. So when you're surrounding yourself with different people, go to different events, and your personal development, feeding your mind, you start having a longer term uh, vision, longer term, um, yeah, having long term thinking instead of having that short term mindset. So you've got, um, so obviously that's, as I said, I'll go back to it. I, I got involved with network marketing when I was, gosh, when I was a sophomore in college, it helped me get through college. And then when I went to law school, it helped me pay off my law school loans. Uh, what we do now, of course, is, is different compared to what I did uh, then. Um, but the, the fact is, is that I'm super grateful for all of the mentoring that I received with the network marketing and uh, it helped me succeed in all aspects of my business life, all the way from giving me the money to invest into real estate into uh, running the business that we have now. That was all funded by the years that I did within network marketing. The question I have for you is, uh, what is the difference between the most successful guys now? You've talked about being consistent. Uh, we've talked a little bit about mentoring. But what's the real difference today between the guys who are doing very well and the guys who are not doing very well? That's an excellent question. I think number one is uh, it's the mindset, right? We're talking about the delayed gratification, um, the consistency. But I think also knowing that in, in networking, it's about duplication. To really get the high level, you need duplication. And knowing that there's only four reasons why people stay. And this kind of is like... It goes back to your previous question, like how do you compete against the Amazon and all that stuff? It's never just about the product, right? So there's four reasons why people stay. Number one is obviously they make money, right? If you're making people money, they're going to stay. But in this profession, we know that there's nothing, nothing against it, but most people don't make any money. Now, it's nothing against direct selling. It's just that people, that's the way it is. It's just like most people join, go join the gym, they don't even show up. Right. Most people who buy a set of golf clubs, they never practice after the first month. Most people who uh, buy a brand expensive piano don't become professional pianists. Most people get a real estate license. Don't even I think the majority of it don't even sell a house. The average real estate realtor, the average income. You know, a lot of times people talk about direct selling. The average distributor makes seven hundred dollars a year. But the average real estate person makes less than thirty thousand. OK, that's like welfare money. So that's nothing against the profession. That's just humans in general. So the fact that most people in network marketing don't make any money, that's nothing against the industry because that is like that in everywhere. So most people don't make money. So how do you, uh, you keep people? And these top leaders know that number one. The, the second thing is people love the product. They build a culture where the product or service is really important. And as long as you enjoy the product and service, you will stay on that stay on that product, service. And you will, you will buy, get on the ownership programs and that creates residual income, right? And a lot of these people, they're happy. They just basically relative become customers. They're happy. And then they once in a while, they may refer someone to get one to sign up with one customer. Right? So you have a lot of people doing very little things. But the masses, they want to give you that residual repeat income. Third thing is the uh, relationships, the social, uh, social relationships. If you have a good relationships with people and people like you, they like the team culture, they will stay there. Right, they will stay there. Uh, so even though I'm not making much money, but I love the product. And Jeff, I love you, and we we're friends. It's cool. I'll, I'll stay on the product. I'll stay in your. I still. I'll stay in your downline. I'll buy the products every month, even if I don't buy the full ordership. Maybe I'll buy a couple products. Right, maybe my budget money is tight. I still buy, continue to buy because I like you. I like the friends, and you can see this a lot of times in the church. Right, in church where I always talk about the most successful network marketing company is the church. And, you know, I'm a born-in Christian. God's very, Jesus Christ is very important to me. But let's look at Christianity from a non-spiritual perspective. The church is the most successful network marketing company, right? And how do the people, why did, you know, start for 11, 12 people, one betrayed, 11 people became billions. It's because they're very good at that. They're very good at the relationships. And you all know someone that they don't like that church. It's boring, the sermon, but they still go because all their friends go. Right, or they go because they have church basketball league, and they, they show up. It's the same thing in network marketing. These leaders create a good relationship. They do social events where people have fun, fun, and that leads to number four is fulfillment. Not everyone needs to make a lot of money to be successful in network marketing. Some people, they just. I, I remember I had this lady, and she's still active today. Like she earns only like a hundred, two hundred a month. And that you can't be a full-time income. She's been doing it for almost 20 years. Definitely not a quote-unquote millionaire success, right? But she 
to her, she's successful and she's happy because she puts her friends on the company. She loves the products and she feels every week she contributes to her team cause she feels useful. And that fulfillment is what keeps people in. And when they keep people long enough, eventually they may bring one or two people. So you have to understand most of you, these top leaders, they understand most people don't duplicate, but you duplicate leaders. But most of those people, they become good customers, happy customers, and you keep them there long enough, they'll slowly bring people. And uh, and if you, if you take that with a long-term outlook, you're going to build a very successful business. So the last thing I'll ask you is, as you're evaluating the very best, best network marketers out there, what is it that they're doing to be able to create that relationship very specifically with that new prospect? Because I think that the, the biggest issue within network marketing is people think that everybody has to succeed. How does that top mentor pick the proper mentee in order to be able to duplicate him or herself? Well, they are able to really understand that not everyone, and even though everyone says they want it, want it and want to be a leader, not every, most people are not. Right. And they focus on personal recruiting. So just say they bring you in, Jeff, and you say, you want it, you want it. And I, I made this be mistake before, but you, you know, I'm saying, let's go prospect tomorrow. Let's attend the training. You said, I, you can't, you got to go fix your studio. You got to do this. Now the old Simon would just say, come on, I'll make, I'll guilt you. Say, come on, you got to do this. Can't you see like this will make you money? This can't you get, see this will get you out of it. And then the person, what happens is I create no fulfillment. I make you feel bad. Right. And you know, deep down, like, hey, I'm not going to be successful in this because I don't have Simon's drive. And then you quit because uh, you're tired of my text messages and phone calls to push and motivate you. The top leaders know that, hey, you know, Jeff, maybe he's got all those things going on in his life, but he can still benefit from the business. He can benefit from the products. I'm going to love him for where he's at. Right. Everyone's at a different level. Maybe, Jeff, you are saying, hey, you know what? I want to do this because I know it's the right thing to do, but I got a couple of things going on in my life. I may not be as active. Right. So I'm just going, hey, you know what? You're not going to show up for trainings? No problem because I understand where you're at, Jeff. Right. And I'm not going to push you. Jeff may never be that leader, but that's fine. He may still get, he still may, he, he may still benefit because we talk about the four things, right? The, uh, he's not going to make any money, but he gets, he likes the product. He gets the social relationships and he gets the fulfillment. He makes feel, he feel good by doing something. I'm going to make sure he gets that and leave him alone and spend the majority of my time recruiting a leader that really wants it. And everyone's different. It's like when you go to the gym and you don't show up every day, the gym owner doesn't call you. Say, Jeff, where have you been? You haven't showed up for two weeks. Let's get going. But they're not going to do that because if you, if you keep doing that, you're going to quit that gym, right? You, you're going to quit. They love you for where you're at. And everyone's at a different stage in their life for the business. Everyone can be successful. That's what top leaders do. They know, hey, this person, they're going to lead her? Or maybe right now, they're just more like a customer. And they are a customer, no problem. You can attend the trainings, team trainings. You can attend, definitely attend the social uh, get, get togethers, the fun stuff. But I'm not going to push them that hard. I'm going to make them feel and let them be successful. In this whole, and everyone has their own definition of success. Let them be successful where he's at. Well, I'm going to spend the majority of my time, go recruit and find that person that really wants it. So you're basically saying patience and make sure that you have a lot of different choices so that people can really advance at their own their own level. A absolutely. Uh, and, and, you know, absolutely. And never get into management. And, you know, talk about uh, one other thing is never get into management mode because that's the kiss of death, right? Yeah. Top leaders to ever know, they're always personally recruiting. Not just helping the downlines, motivating people. They are going out there you know, personally enrolling new customers or distributors every single day. Well, I couldn't agree more. And I think that that's the biggest difference as I looked back in my career when I was a network marketer. The guys who put in a lot of people had choices and they never had to blow somebody out by pushing them too hard. Appreciate uh, you being on. Tell, tell everybody where they can find you and uh, on Instagram and, and just different social where they can find you. Yeah, you can connect with me on uh, Instagram, Simon W. Chan, or on Facebook, Simon W. Chan. I actually reply back to every single message. It may take me a little while, but I'll reply back. I look forward to connecting to everyone here. And uh, yeah, Jeff, thank you for having me on here. It's an honor. And uh, thanks again. Tell me where they can find your book, too, because I know that you've sold a lot of the books on there. Yes, yeah, uh, thank you for letting me plug that. The Consistency Pill. It's an Amazon bestseller. It's got a lot of great reviews. Uh, you can just go to Amazon, just search for Consistency and it should be pop up. Consistency pill. 
Well, I think that you've seen why it is that uh, Simon was successful as a network marketer and also successful as a coach. You may say he's the shy guy from uh, shy guy from New York, but uh, everybody can transform themselves. And I think that's kind of the beauty of the industry that he's in. Thanks so much for being with us, Simon. You're welcome, Jeff. Have a fun.